if you click this video, you click this video because you're curious if learning how to code in today's world is as messed up as people say. Well, you're in the right place. I'm gonna break down exactly why many people are frustrated, referencing insights from the eye-opening video that I just watched from Dorian Develops. But that's not all. We're not just talking about the problems here, but I'm also gonna give you some real talk on how to navigate through these challenges, finding reliable resources, and what it actually takes to make it into the tech industry today. Learning how to code freaking sucks. You see comments from people who have a ton of experience in the tech industry. You see people who are, have been studying code for years, struggling to get a job, even those with experience struggling to get a job. I want to, to help people really understand what's going on in the tech industry today. Now, when I watch this video, I agree with a lot of what Dorian Develops said, but I also want to put my own input and help y'all navigate through the situation. So one of the main things that he spoke about is how there are so many different resources out there. And I mean, it's overwhelming. You put in how to learn our HTML, how to learn JavaScript, CSS, then there's uh, SAS or less, or there's, uh, um, what else is there? There's Tailwind, Bootstrapped, you name it. So many different CSS libraries out there. I haven't even gone to JavaScript because when there's JavaScript, there's React, there's Next.js, and all these different other libraries and frameworks like Angular and there's Felt.js. What the heck do you learn? So there's not only so many different languages that you need to learn, not even just languages, there's tools, learning how to use a terminal, there's Git, how to use Postman, you name it. So there's so many different languages that exist that you need to learn to get a job in 2023, 2024, 2025. Then how the heck do you choose which courses, which tutorials to use to learn these things? And one company that he mentioned, a nonprofit actually, a nonprofit organization he mentioned was Free Code Camp. How YouTubers always say, go to Free Code Camp. And now I always recommend Free Code Camp. Now there are two places I recommend. I recommend Zero to Mastery and I am an affiliate of them, but I also use them to learn Python to help me with my job, but I also recommend Free Code Camp, which is completely free. And one thing he said about Free Code Camp is that YouTubers always recommend Free Code Camp, but why? Because it's free. Because a lot of people can't afford to pay 30, 40, 50 bucks a month to get a job in tech, it's expensive and it adds up, right? That's over $300 a year. But one of the reasons I always recommend Free Code Camp, and Free Code Camp is great because you can learn everything from HTML, CSS, JavaScript, algorithms, I believe data structure as well. It has everything you need on there. And why I recommend that is because it's free and it's not a video. One thing that I really don't like, that I don't use, that I used to use, are video tutorials. I prefer to read because I learn better that way, because I can go on my own pace rather than listening to someone talk as a teaching tutorial, right? So I recommend Free Code Camp. That's why I recommend it. But he brings up a good point. Free Code Camp isn't enough. It's, it, it's not, and it's true, it's not enough, right? And it's not even just, there's not only Free Code Camp, there's a lot of courses on Udemy. There's all these other courses out there from a, a Code Academy, you name it, coding boot camps, right? I think when it comes to choosing a tutorial to learn how to code, I think you should choose one. You do a ton of research, look at reviews, look at the comment section. You know what? In the comment section below, if you recommend a good tutorial, please put it in the comment section below, help people out, all right? Actually, I'll leave a comment, I'll pin that, and please let me know in the comment section below where a good place to learn how to code and who validates that, right? But what I highly recommend, yes, there's a lot of resources out there, choose one. And when you go through one tutorial, that's it. What I mean by this is when you go through HTML course and then a CSS course, that's it. Go through JavaScript course, that's it. Buy one tutorial and then go through documentation the whole way and use ChatGPT for the rest. And I am working on a video on how to learn code using only ChatGPT and how it can really help you out rather than using tutorials to be honest. The second thing that I like that he pointed out is how there are so many tech influencers out there, including me including him, including everyone else, right? Now, I have the benefit of being on YouTube for a long time. I take pride in the fact that for seven years, well, for five years of the seven years I've been on YouTube, I sold nothing, right? I was affiliate for one online place to learn how to code for five years and that's it, but I never sold tutorials. I never did any of that, right? Why? Because I wanna make sure I give y'all as much value as possible. But there are a lot of people out there, YouTubers out there who do YouTube only so they can sell courses to you. And it's true. And not even just people who are selling courses, there are just a lot of YouTubers out there, a lot of influencers out there trying to tell you what to learn. Right? So I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one mentorships below, and if you wanna check it out, check it out in the link description below. But I do a lot of mentorships, 
And in so many of my different mentorships, people are telling me from, from people who are in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s are telling me, Chris, I'm doing this one-on-one mentorship because I don't know where to start. I don't know what to learn. One person says learn Python. Another person says learn C++ from a CS50 course on, on Harvard's website, on their YouTube channel. Uh, one person says become a front-end developer. Another person says become a data scientist. Where the heck do I start? This is when it sucks. This is when it becomes so difficult because you could become a data scientist, a data analyst, a software engineer, front-end developer, back-end developer, machine learning, deep learning, computer vision, where the heck do you start? And there's also cybersecurity in tech. I think this is when you really need to decide what it is that you enjoy doing. I, I, this is when I, I highly suggest when, and this takes time, but this is very important because this can determine what you do for the rest of your career. You can try doing a little front-end development, build something, see how you like it, and then try something in back-end and then see how you like that too. And then maybe try doing some data analyst stuff, data scientist stuff, and it takes time, but that's kind of how you determine what you want to do. Don't do something just because of how much it pays. I made that decision with my last job, highly regret that. I moved into data engineering space when I'm, I've been a front-end developer for four to five years of my seven-year career. That was a world of difference. And I love working in the back end space, but joining a company just for that money is not a wise decision. So do not copy what I did. Do something because you enjoy it. But yes, there's a lot of influencers out there. Who the heck do you trust, right? Validate these people, look at their content, right? Look at the comments section. Are they only trying to sell you something? I want you to watch out for all these different things. Another point that I really like that Dorian mentioned in his video is how the job market in today's economy legitimately freaking sucks. Now I can be honest about this because I was laid off not too long ago. I'm also looking for jobs. I have interviewed at companies where I put in so much effort, so much prep work in doing the technical stuff for the technical interviews. They've ghosted me multiple times. I've also received two job offers that I rejected. I was hopefully supposed to receive a job offer this week, but the little delayed in the interview. So I should find out if I get the job or not on Monday. So wish me luck on that. Now we'll see if I get the job there. But despite that, it is a totally different world. When I go on LinkedIn, the amount of jobs I see available now are not nearly as close as they used to be. When I go on Indeed.com or Google for my particular roles that I'm interviewing for, there's not that many jobs. It's different and not even just that. A lot of companies are trying to go back to the office, return to the office. I don't want to return to the office. I want to stay here where I'm at. There's one company, as a matter of fact, that wanted me to move to San Francisco. They were willing to pay me $240,000 a year plus options, that was base salary. I decided to not take that job because I don't want to move back to San Francisco. I'd rather do this full time or find a remote job that pays less so I can stay here. There's not that many jobs now that are remote compared to before, right? And so this job market has changed. The amount of friends I've seen get laid off or the fact that being laid off is normal now where before it was maybe every two or three years. Now it seems, I've seen people who've been laid off three times in one year, so unfortunate and it sucks. And so I, I see why Dorian is talking about this uncertainty of working in tech now, how it can be pretty terrifying, but this won't last forever. I don't see this lasting forever, right? What happened in 2008 with all the layoffs, right? Didn't happen forever. And so I do generally believe this will eventually pick up. I could be wrong, but I think that if you allow yourself to live in fear and not pursue tech because you're afraid of layoffs, no matter what company you work for, you will eventually be laid off or fired. There's no guarantee in any job. There's no such thing as legit job security. And I think it's very important that you really you, you look at yourself and see if you want to take this risk. But I want to talk about that a little bit more when I move on to the next part. But the job market is a job market and there are layoffs. But will this last forever? I don't think this will last forever at all. Now, let's move on to the next part where I want to talk about the impact of artificial intelligence on tech jobs. I'm not going to lie. Artificial intelligence is, can be terrifying. I'm not going to lie. It's freaking terrifying. When you look at the tech that's come out today, when you look at jobs being replaced, yeah, it can impact our jobs. But I honestly don't see that happening anytime soon, not within the next four or five years. I could be wrong. I could, I could be wrong. But I want to reemphasize, do not allow yourself to live in fear, everyone. Please don't. It's, it's, this is extremely, extremely important. What I mean by this is, yes, AI could eventually replace developers. And I think they'll replace some kind of developers here and there, but that's not gonna happen anytime soon. If you're gonna allow this to stop you and live in fear from trying to pursue something in tech that could potentially change your life forever, you're missing out, honestly. And, I, and I'm being quite honest, I think y'all missing out. 
because AI is not going to take our jobs right away. And not even just that, let's say you get your foot in the door as a front end developer, back end developer, you name it, data analyst, data scientist, you name it. Who says you can't transition into the AI field? or transition into an AI engineer, but just get your professional experience first. But if you allow yourself to live in fear and never pursue tech in the first place, when you had a three, four, five, six, seven year span to actually get your foot in the door, will you live in a regret? Yeah, you can potentially live in a regret. Like for me in general, this job that I really want and I'll hopefully receive a notice if I get the job or not by Monday is in the AI space, it's in the NLP space. It's in the machining, machine learning, artificial intelligence space. And I'm a, I was a front end developer and I moved to the final rounds of this interview. I'm moving into the AI space. Does that mean I should run away because AI can take our jobs? No, not at all. I do like how Dorian says, you know, eventually us tech YouTubers, which is true, right? I, I, I'm a tech YouTuber. will eventually tell y'all maybe in the future, we'll, we'll start recommending y'all to become a plumber or you know what I mean? <laughs> and a journeyman electrician, maybe. We'll never know, maybe that'll happen. But what if you made it? What if you got your foot in the door? What if you got that tech job? I tried being an electrician, I sucked. I failed everything, all the tests to get into my journeyman program, I, I failed. I tried being a nurse. I dropped out of three nursing programs. I mean, I was in debt from that. I failed in a lot of things, trying to change my life, get into the uh, medical field, but I'm not good at school. It sucks. There are other things you can try and potentially make six figures. There's a lot of things, uh, companies out there. It does not need to be tech. But if you're watching this video, it's because you're interested. If you're watching this video, it's because you want it. Yes, these things can happen. But so if it happens, it happens. If it happens, by the time it does, you'll potentially make $300,000, $400,000 by the time it happens, $500,000 compared to like what I was making before tech, which was $22,000 a year. I'd rather be happy making over a million dollars the last seven years compared to making $23,000 a year the last seven years, including the rate of inflation right now, kind of crazy. Don't allow yourself to live in fear. I still think it's worth it. It's terrifying. Everything about learning code sucks, but it's worth it.